everyone, Live It Like Lisa here. Welcome back to another Trash to Treasure video. This time it is the Tin Bucket Edition. So we have a range of different tins and buckets here that I want to do up, give a makeover to and resell. So let's get started. The first project we're starting with is this tin caddy that I purchased from Kmart. Again, it was one of those impulse buys where I just saw galvanized, thought farmhouse, thought I had to have it, bought it and just never used it. So uh, I'm going to give it a makeover and hopefully resell it so it can move on to a new home. So for this, it's just going to be a very, very simple makeover. We're just going to start off by painting it in some white chalk paint, of course, because what's a video without painting something in white chalk paint? Um, and then we're just going to decorate it with a little bit of jute twine. And that's, that's all that we're going to do to this one. And I think it just uh, brings it up into a nice farmhousey feel. So here's our finished caddy and this is very versatile. You could use this as a utensil holder um, in your office for holding pencils, pens, in your craft room. It's quite versatile and I just feel like the updates make it look a little bit more appealing. So that's our first project. Now on to the next. So for our next project, I have this bucket here that I picked up from Kmart quite a while ago. It was a soak bucket. I've already given it a dry brush in some white chalk paint from when we very first moved in here. But I was just never using it. And I had, I saw a inspiration picture on Pinterest that I wanted to replicate using this bucket. So we're going to turn this into some vintage looking farmhouse decor started off by spraying the whole bucket in a like a machine gun silvery gray color uh, it doesn't really matter I just wanted it to start with a silver kind of gray um, base and now I'm using some black acrylic paint some gray acrylic paint and some white acrylic paint to create a kind of like a galvanized vintage look to this bucket so I'm just using a dabber sponge and just going in with the different colors of paint until I get the desired look. So I'm not really looking for a galvanized look as such, but I just want it to look really kind of old, weathered, uh, rusted, but with that white sort of rust rather than the brown rust. And yeah, that's the kind of look I'm going for anyway. So it's just a matter of just blending in the paints until I'm happy with the look. And if I find that there's areas that are too dark, I just go back over it again with either the white or a lighter gray color. And yeah, just keep building up the colors until I get the desired effect. So once I'm happy with the effect that I've got on the bucket, this is the kind of look I was going for. I did put a little bit of brown acrylic paint around the handle and around the uh, base of the bucket on the outside. So I found this image that I wanted to put onto the bucket and I've printed it off onto some tissue paper and we're going to stick this image onto the bucket using some PVA glue or Mod Podge if you've got it. So what I'm actually going to do is just either cut or tear around that image close to the words. You don't want too much excess overhang. And then, um, yeah, we're going to glue it straight to the bucket. Once you have your image glued on, you then want to go over the image with some more Mod Podge and very, very gently 
press down onto the image um, with the brush and the extra Mod Podge to try and smooth out any of the wrinkles. Once all the glue or Mod Podge has dried, we are now going to go back over that image with some white, some grey and some black if needed, just to help blend in all of those edges of the, um, of the word. So we want to try and make it look pretty seamless so that it looks like it's part of the bucket and not just stuck on as an afterthought. So yeah, this is just all going to be a bit of a blending um, technique just to go back and forth and you can see now it's starting to disappear and look like it's more of part of the bucket so yeah And here is the finished bucket all done and I'm pretty happy with the way this has turned out actually. It actually looks a lot darker on camera than it is in real life. It's actually quite a bit lighter um, in real life. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. Almost tempted to keep this one, but I just really don't have a purpose for it. So I'm definitely going to be reselling it and hopefully it can find a new home. So now on to the next project. So these next two little buckets I am pretty sure were from Kmart. They're really cute but I've just never used them. So we're going to give them a makeover and move them on. So I'm going to start by giving them a few coats of this beautiful sage green homemade chalk paint. And I ended up painting them inside and out. And then we're going to just lightly distress them before decorating the front. So to decorate the front, I'm just going to be tracing on with a Sharpie the number one and the number two onto a small piece of drop cloth. We are then going to fray the edges of that drop cloth, stick that onto a piece of burlap and then stick the burlap onto the bucket. And I'm just using PVA glue to glue all of this material to each other and then onto the bucket. I just find it has a lot stronger bond than hot glue. And here are the finished buckets ready to go to their new home. I'm really happy with the way these have turned out actually. So now on to our last project. So the last two buckets I'm going to be giving a makeover to are very similar to the Kmart ones. These ones I believe were from Ikea and they don't actually have a handle on them. So you can also use them as a little galvanized pot as well. We're going to start by giving these ones a couple of coats of chalk paint in this beautiful minty blue color. And then again, I'm going to lightly distress them on the outside. So to decorate the front of these two buckets, I have this material left over from a furniture uh, makeover that I did a little while ago. And it's got a couple of um, label looking images on it. And I just thought I would cut a couple of these out and stick these straight onto the bucket using some PVA glue.
So here are these two little pots all done. I feel like these have a very French country flavour to them and would probably look really cute in like a sewing room or craft room or even just to have displayed in your lounge room. I just, I just really love these actually. So tempted to keep them but I'm not going to. <laughs> So there you go, there's four very, very different ways of transforming some tin buckets or tin tubs that you might have lying around your house. And I hope this has given you some inspiration or maybe spark some ideas of your own. And if you give them a go, definitely let, let me know in the comments below. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys, and I will see you in my next one. Thanks for watching.